All right, so welcome everybody to this webinar for the Australian Space Data Analysis Facility. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Melanie Johnson Hollett and I'm the director. Uh, I'm going to go through a little bit about what ASDAF is and what it does. And then we're going to hand over to Lee Tyers, one of our data scientists, who's going to talk through the expression of interest form, which is there to allow external people to work with ASDAF potentially on your space data applications. So firstly, um, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation. So they are the owners of the land on which we meet here at Curtin University. And I pay my respects to their illness past, present and emerging. So now I'd like to move on and talk a little bit about the context in which ASDAF was formed and the global space industry. So the global space industry is worth about 468 billion Australian dollars. And the Australian component of that is just under 5 billion and it's growing rather rapidly. In fact, that component is growing about three and a half times faster than the rest of the economy. And as it turns out, 80% of the value in Australia is from applications for the use of space data. And so it was really with this context in mind that ASDAF was formed. And also because the Australian government has estimated that there are currently 10,000 people working in the space industry in Australia, and they have a goal to triple that with an additional 20,000 people by 2030. So in order to realize that ambition, we need to both upskill the workforce that we currently have in place using space data and grow and support industry and research uptake of space data initiatives. So ASDAF is a facility uh, to help Australian SMEs and researchers unlock the power of space data. And we want to do this to enrich and grow the Australian digital space economy. The program was funded by the Australian Space Agency and the Government of Western Australia uh, via the Department of Jobs, Tourism, Science and Innovation. And we have three delivery partners, Policy Supercomputing Centre, the WA Data Science Innovation Hub and the Curtin Institute for Computation who have joined the project in June as a delivery partner. Uh, so I'm actually the director of the Curtin Institute for Computation, and I just want to give a brief overview of the CIC so that gives some context for the data science team that we have uh, accessible to ASDAF. So the Curtin Institute for Computation is a knowledge accelerator, essentially using data science, high performance computing, visualization, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, we employ a team of mostly PhD level data scientists here at Curtin University. And we work with 170 researchers across Curtin uh, working in this digital transformation space to produce value for research, government and industry. So to give you an idea of the sort of stuff that we do, last year the CIC worked on 46 data science projects engaging with 30 external organisations. And this was everyone from SMEs to government departments, cooperative research centres and not-for-profits. And so it's a very standard thing for us to have data scientists work on problems with external parties. And it's through uh, this work that we've uh, agreed to collaborate as a delivery partner for ASDAF. And so that allows people working on the ASDAF project to gain access to some of our data science team. And you'll hear from, from Lee, who's a member of that team, a bit later on. So if we look at uh, what ASDAF is designed to do, well, I think we're going to look at the team first. So we've got... Um, members from the CIC, from the Pawsey Supercomputing Centre, and these are all their lovely faces here. So this is our team of business development professionals, project coordinators, data scientists, HPC specialists, um, and marketing team. And these are the people who you will get to work with if you choose to partner with us. We move on to the next slide. So the focus of ASDAF is to educate SMEs and other interested players in the space sector about the value of space data, uh, what's available to them and how they can use it within their businesses to actually attract them to use space data, uh, particularly for their strategic operations and daily operations and to empower them through data literacy and increased data usage. So we have a number of parallel programs that we can use to help SMEs and researchers with this. These include knowledge transfer, training and data capability building and data engineering and access to uh, data science expertise. So that's our website there and you can find more information on each of these different threads um, on the website. 
So let's look at knowledge transfer. So ASDAF facilitates a range of mechanisms for knowledge transfer of the use of space data and where to find available space data. We are focused in particular on freely available space data rather than commercial uh, space data. But if you have commercial space data sets that you have already got access to, we are more than happy to work with you on them. We just can't provide access to them directly. We are also interested in discussing potential ideas on how your organization can partner with us and other organizations in the space sector to realize value. In particular, looking at training, ASDAF has um, a commitment to training and capability building. Um, so we partner with the three ASDAF delivery partners, the Porsche Supercomputing Center, the Curtin Institute for Computation and the WA Data Science Innovation Hub uh, to help SMEs and researchers discover, access and utilize space data. In particular, we can tailor training programs to enhance uh, capability and capacity uh, building for the utilization of space data. And if your organization is interested in bespoke training, we would like you to get in contact with us. And then if we look at what we've done so far in the first year of operation, ASDAF has engaged with over 500 uh, researchers distributed across Australia. So as a program funded by uh, the Australian Space Agency, we have a national lens, but of course we're also funded by the WA state government and so we're based here in Western Australia and during the COVID period we have of necessity engaged primarily with people here in WA, but we are a national facility and we would very much like to engage with people across the country. So if we continue, the reason that we're here for today's webinar is to explain to people how they can um, fill in our EOI form. One of the things that that will allow you to do is access our data engineering and data science expertise. So we've recently launched this service to have members of the data science team work with SMEs and researchers directly on their space data usages. So if you have a commercially interesting idea and want some data uh, science assistance, you can now apply through our EOI process. Round one is currently open and runs through to the 17th of September and you can find it at the address on the bottom of the page there on our website. So www.asdaf.space slash EOI. And before we move on to talk about the details of the process, we're just gonna talk a bit about what kind of projects ASDAF can support. So we're interested in supporting people using space data. And what we mean by space data is data that's either been collected by satellites in orbit around the, the earth, either looking back down towards the earth as in earth observation data, or potentially looking at things which are of commercial interest, such as the sun, we're not, um, it's not our remit to look at data for astronomical research. So we're not worrying about XMM data of galaxy clusters or things like that. Um, the other thing that we're able to support is data which is collected from the ground in support of the use of satellites. So space situational awareness data is in scope uh, for ASDAF. And in all cases, we obviously would want projects that require a data scientist skilled in either remote sensing or earth observations or, or potentially space situational awareness um, to help you realize whatever value it is that you are aiming to seek from space data. So with that, I'm now going to hand over to my colleague Lee to talk to you about how to actually fill in the form. Hello everyone, um, thank you Melanie. Um, so moving forward onto the next slide as well. Um, I'll be talking to you about the EY process in general and how to get into touch. All right, so when we actually have, when you go to our website, asdaf.space slash EOI, um, we'll first off want you to submit an expression of interest, an EOI. There'll be a form, it'll be pretty straightforward. I'll be going through exactly how to submit a good one in a short while. Once you've done that, we'll either make some recommendations to you as to where you might go from there. And if we think, what you're saying or what you're making an expression of interest for is suitable for us. We'll be in touch to organize a meeting with our technical team. Try to bring a technical, <clears throat> try to bring a technical person if you can. Um, you'll probably make the conversation a lot easier. Um, after that, we might either make some more suggestions or move on to the final stage, in which case we'll assist you in making a formal proposal for our selection committee. And once we have all of them, we'll then decide on which projects to move forward with based on available resources. Um, I should note, 
EY submissions close on the 17th of September, but they will always be open. We also don't retain, ASDAF will not retain any of the intellectual property created from anything that comes out of the EOI. So when we're actually um, choosing the projects at the very end, there's six criteria listed here. They're also listed on the website. I'm not really gonna go through them too much here, but try and phrase what you're doing in terms of these selection criteria. So a good example of an EOI, one of the fields you need to fill out is a company description. So we wanna know who you are, where you're based, how large is your company, what are the general types of employees, and what does the main work you do consist of? We basically just wanna know who you are, what you do, and why. So the next thing is probably one of the more important things, the project background. One paragraph is fine, just a brief overview of the project for someone not from your specific field. We can kind of iron out some of the details a bit more in a technical discussion afterwards, but we kind of want to know how the project relates to the work you currently do. Um, and we want you to let us know why your project is important to your organization. So after that, the project goals, about one or two paragraphs, one paragraph is fine. We want you to break down the project in more detail, are there multiple parts, what you need, and we want in particular for you to explicitly outline what you want from this project. After that, external dependencies, just break down what you might need. Maybe you need compute resources, maybe you need data storage. If you're not too sure on any of these, we can always iron them out in a discussion later. Um, but in general, yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. All right, thank you very much. Um, if anyone has any questions, we'll move on to the Q&A then. If you have a question, just pop straight into the chat. I'll just jump on, please. So, um, Asha Stabak, I'm the Business Development Manager. Um, just also want to let everyone know that um, in the case that we can't necessarily offer you the, the data analytical technical support, all along the way, we'll be working with you to sort of try and find alternate sources of data that you may be useful and pointing people in the right direction. And we'll also be looking at providing you with some bespoke guidance around how you can progress your ideas. So even if you're not successful in terms of the process and going through and, and getting that ongoing support, um, certainly encourage people to still submit uh, their expression of interest. Uh, let us know what it is that you're looking to work with. Um, and also, you know, that actually helps us to understand what are the market needs um, and how we can actually demonstrate the demand for this service um, to the space agency. So it was recognised as a gap in the in the sector, and this is a way that we're looking to to support the growth of the space economy as well. Um, also, keep an eye on the website for various training and programs and events and things like that as well. Um, we'll also continue to work collaboratively with other. Um, Sort of providers and other um, industries across the sector uh, that are also doing a lot of things to progress the economy as well. So if we're not necessarily what you need at this point in time, there's still lots of ways that you can explore more, learn more um, and get involved as well. Doesn't look as though we have uh, any questions coming through, um, but I would like to thank everyone for attending today. Um, thank you for that overview. Uh, uh, and we look forward to receiving the submissions. Uh, as Lee mentioned, it will be until September 17th for the first round. It is always open and continue to assess. And if we have the capacity in between those rounds, uh, we can certainly look at if there's a way that we can support you with your endeavours to increase the utilisation of space data. So thank you. Uh, thank you to um, our director, Melanie johnston Hollett. Thank you to our data scientist, Lee Tyres, um, and also Daphne for your support in bringing this together. Thank you.